best in working density and specific gravity problems is dimensional analysis, or if you will, the factor label method. Let's start with density. First of all, did you know that density is an intensive property? And do you know what intensive properties are as opposed to extensive properties? Well, an intensive property is a property like density that it doesn't matter what quantity of material you have. It is a characteristic of that particular substance as opposed to extensive property, which is very much related to how much of a substance you have, such as mass or volume or something of that type. Oh, well, let's get on with this. What is density? Well, density is a description of how thick something is. I know, I know. Your first thought was to say it's mass per unit volume, and my students always say that. But you know, that is a definition of the way we go about calculating it. It's not really a description of density. Density is how thick something is, but you're right. Specifically, it is mass per unit volume. So density is equal to mass over volume, just as you see here. Now, there are a couple of densities that you really do need to know. You need to know that at approximately 4 degrees Celsius, actually it's a hair under it, the density of water is 1.0000 grams per milliliter. Most people probably have that tucked away in their brains from somewhere in their background, but did you know that at STP, Standard Conditions of Temperature and Pressure, the density of air is 1.292 grams per liter. And you should know both of these. These are intensive properties. You should know these because they are also standard. Here's a problem. A box has a volume of 500 cubic inches. What mass of air will fill the box at STP, Standard Temperature and Pressure? Notice the decimal I have after the 500. That's to make sure you understand that I have given you the volume in three significant digits or three significant figures. Here we go. Let me show you a trick about working these. Don't memorize a lot of conversions. Just know how to use your, your mathematics smartly. 500 cubic inches. Now I know that there are 2.54 centimeters in an inch. Did you know that? Well, I think everybody knows that. But I have to have my units cancel. And cubic inches is not going to cancel with inches very well. So I need to put this quantity in brackets or in parentheses and cube it. Now watch the units cancel. Cubic inches will cancel cubic inches. And I am left with a product of 500 times 2.54 cubed centimeters cubed. And that gives me 8,193 cubic centimeters. Now, don't forget to cube the 2.54. Since a cubic centimeter is approximately a milliliter, this means we have 8,193 milliliters. Ah, life is looking a lot better. 8,193 milliliters times a liter per 1,000 milliliters means that I have 8.193 liters. Oh, but I don't need to stop and do that math. Instead, plug in the next unit times 1.292 grams per liter. You did learn that, didn't you? And that tells me then, when I cancel these units, liters cancel, that the mass of this material is 10.6 grams. So, what mass of air is needed to fill a box with a volume of 500 cubic inches? Why, 10.6 grams. Now let's look at specific gravity. Specific gravity is nothing more than a comparison of densities. It's a comparison of the density of something to the density of whatever we're using as a standard. And specifically, it might be thought of in this formula, density of x over the density of a standard. The, standards for so the standard for solids and liquids is water, usually at 4 degrees Celsius. And you know that that, that density of, of water is what? It's 1 gram per milliliter. 
and the standard for gases is air, usually at STP. And what is that? It's 1.292 grams per liter. Let's try a problem. If the specific gravity of mercury is 13.6, what volume would 100 grams of mercury occupy? Well, folks, that's easy. 100 grams of mercury and the 13.6 specific gravity tells us, since mercury is a liquid, that mercury has a density of 13.6 grams per milliliter. So it's 100 grams times a milliliter over 13.6 grams. Those units cancel very nicely and we get 7.35 milliliters. But let's try a problem that's a shade more interesting. If the specific gravity of carbon dioxide is 1.52, what volume would 80 grams of the gas occupy? The specific gravity is 1.52. Hmm. What is our reference? What is our standard for gases? Well, the standard for gases is air at STP, and since we weren't given any other conditions, we will therefore assume that this is at STP. And the specific gravity, uh, or the density, I beg your pardon, of air is 1.292 grams per liter. So let's try the problem. A specific gravity of the gas, carbon dioxide, of 1.52 means that carbon dioxide is 1.52 times as dense as air. Or if you will, a volume of carbon dioxide is 1.52 times as heavy as an equal volume of air. All right, either way you want to think about it. So the density of carbon dioxide then is 1.292 grams per liter, the density of air, times 1.52 to give us 1.96 grams per liter as the density of carbon dioxide. Now, it's easy to work the problem now that we have figured this out. 80 grams of carbon dioxide times a liter over 1.96 grams tells us that we have, after canceling the units, a volume of 40.8 liters. Do you get the idea? Remember, specific gravity is a ratio of densities, and it's a ratio using a standard. The standard for liquids and solids is water. The standard for gases is air. Brought to you courtesy of the chemistry professor, offering complete chemistry courses on DVD. Visit us at our site on the web, www.chemistryprofessor.com.